What's up, bros? I'm Jonathan. And I'm Caleb. We are a couple of bros on a mission to give you guys the most detailed movie reviews out there with as little bias as possible. Welcome to the All Bros. This week uh, on the podcast, we got nothing for 4K Spotlight. Absolutely jack shit. Um, unless you want to pick up a third version of Dirty Dance. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. That came out uh, last week. I'm sorry. Never mind. Don't listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so we'll just be moving into Through the Wall, where we got a couple of uh, things to talk about. We got some Disney Plus Day announcements, um, as well as a, a certain horror movie um, that both Caleb and I are very excited for. Coming out this October had a huge announcement um, that I think will uh, excite a lot of fans, make them happy, but let's hope it doesn't affect the box office. Um, and then we'll be moving into our headliner after that, uh, which will be our breakdown of Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Um, so yeah, uh, Caleb, what do you say we get started? I say let's do it. Hey guys, I'm Crash, host of the podcast Crash and Taz's Movie Seller. On our show, me and my co-host pick a new movie each week and rate each movie on a few categories that we think are important to making a great movie. After we rate the movie, it gets a final rating, and that lands it somewhere on our seller scale, where it will get labeled as either a well, premium, or a top shelf film. Catch us on platforms like Spotify, Google, Amazon Music, and more. And don't forget to follow us on social media. On Instagram, as Crash and Taz's Movie Seller. It's Crash, the letter N, Taz Movie Seller, with underscores in between each word. And on Facebook, Crash and Taz Movie Seller. Uh, where you, as a listener, can suggest movies for us to rate. And also give us some constructive criticism to make the show more entertaining. Overall, don't forget to follow or subscribe and rate and review us. And get ready for an entertaining show with us. See you guys then. Was that very loud on your end, or was that just me? No, it was ridiculously loud on my end, and I don't oh, know why. Okay, <laughs> okay. Just, just being sure, because Vic, if I go any more deaf in my left ear, I'm going to have that some was, very that's nice words Vic's for you. Fault. That's I know, Vic's I'm just fault. kidding. I don't know, I know why it was that loud. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, uh, so like I said, nothing for 4K Spotlight, so we're moving straight into Through the Wall, where... We got a couple of Disney Plus Day announcements, and Caleb, do you by chance have those pulled up? Um, I will here in a second. <laughs> okay, cool. I know one that we got. Uh, we got our first like official look at how Pinocchio was gonna look like in um the live action version. Was that like Thoughts? a full blown trailer? I I think it was. I mean, it wasn't released to the public. But I think they did showcase a full, full trailer. Dude, what the hell? Like I, I saw it on TikTok, but it only showed like the opening scene with Tom Hanks and then the f blue fairy, and then it like cut off. So I didn't see anything else other than than that. Yeah, I thought it wasn't even. I thought nothing was released for it. Yeah, I mean they've just been. T promoting it on on tiktok lately but yeah i don't know what the hell huh. is up with that yeah. um but what I are your thoughts seen... on how oh you haven't seen how pinocchio looks like the picture like is it a picture yeah the pi... yeah it's a picture oh that's like his comic or not comic <laughs> what the hell are we talking about that's as accurate as you can possibly get though right it is. I feel it might be a little too accurate because it really like it looks too CGI. <laughs> like I don't know. He doesn't even look like he's a puppet anymore. Maybe it's just me. Well, okay. Listen, listen. <laughs> you gotta remember. <laughs> you gotta remember. He's about to school me in Pinocchio. No, not even that. You gotta remember. This is going straight to Disney Plus. They are not going to drop the big money budget that they are going to with like something that's getting released in theaters. See, I, but fair, but I hate when studios do that. They're just but, like, Oh, well, you know, since it's hey, going, going on streaming, we're not going to pay the lady big in budget. the tramp. God damn it. Fair enough. 
yeah, that didn't have a super high budget. The CGI, you could totally tell it was kind of fake. But was the movie bad? No, it wasn't. Okay. Fair enough. Freaking loud ass pump. cat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he is. But I love him to death. I just gotta make sure he doesn't hop up on me. Anyway, um, so, yeah, that... <laughs> okay, fair enough. So I guess we'll see how this uh, translates um, to this movie. Um, I just want them to release the damn trailer so I can actually see him in motion. Yeah, I know, right? Like, come on. <laughs> Dude, like, what I'm surprised is with, like, how accurately they went with Pinocchio. What the hell happened with Jiminy Cricket? That is an excellent question. Like, they kind of dropped the ball with him. <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, if you're going, like, like, show accurate, like, go show accurate. Yeah. You know, f- yeah, fair enough. Wait, what the? I love how when I type in Pinocchio, um, 2022, the first thing that pops up is not that picture. It's a freaking um, new dark Pinocchio soul souls like gameplay. That that's what that's what they're showcasing, not freaking the Disney live action version of Pinocchio. That's freaking hilarious. Literally, it's all about that, except for two articles about Pinocchio. Jeez. Wow. Anyway, um, were you able to get that list pulled up? Uh, yes, I was. Sweet. So, first up, um, like we said, Pinocchio is going to be one of the big releases. Uh, Cars on the Road is going to be another release. So that's Still haven't the, watched uh, that trailer. It, you're not missing a lot. It's just okay. Lightning McQueen and Mater deciding to go on a road trip. So that's what it's going to be. Like the, It's just going to be a series of shorts of Mater and Lightning McQueen's road trip. Okay. Like going I mean, from I'm, like place to place. I enjoy those two characters together for the most part. They've had some moments I hated them. Um, Cars 2! <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> um... But hopefully, as long as it's better than Cars 2, then we're okay. Yeah, I will, I'll definitely check this one out. Um, the next one is the Dancing with the Stars Most Memorable Dances. Who gives a shit about that? I haven't watched um, that show since I watched it with my grandma when I was a child. Yeah, let's see. Um, Epic Adventures with Birdie Gregory. Don't know what that's about. Um, Frozen Sing Along and Frozen 2 Sing Along. Uh, this yeah, other thing called with Growing that, Up. I... Sorry. No, Wait, what, what were you saying? Called? No, I was going to say, I'm amazed that freaking... Um, well, I'm just, I'm just shocked that uh, Encanto got a Sing Along version on Disney Plus before Frozen and Frozen 2 did. <laughs> I think it's just because it's it's newer, so it's like everyone like wants to watch that one. So I think it's just they're working their Fair way enough. backwards. Fair enough. Um yeah, then there's this show called Growing Up. Or it sucks. I'm just kidding. It's like a docu series about adolescence with ten compelling coming of age stories. I'm actually interested. I love coming of age stories, so I'm yeah, actually. Interested I know you're kind that. of a sucker for those, but yes, I mean, I it'll be nice. So it's like ten different stories, and they're going to be thirty minutes each. Sorry, how how many minutes each? Thirty. So a good half hour per episode. So it's not like a a movie or or nothing. Okay. Um, but yeah, then let's see. She Hulk episode four will come out, which yes. I don't know if it, if you've seen episode one yet. Oh, didn't we talk about this? I forget if I talked about it with you or DJ. <laughs> no, yeah, we talked about it, dude. So freaking good. Yeah, dude. A like I told Kale, it was good. I was okay with that. I mean, honestly, uh, 
only the first episode in, and this might be, this might, I mean, after, I had to wait for the whole show to finish, but this might come in second uh, behind Hawkeye for my favorite MCU show. Oof. That's a good call. Um, let's see. We got the Thor Love and Thunder will be coming out. Um, the making of Thor Love and Thunder will be coming out. I, I want to give that movie another watch. Cause I'm, I do too. It's like I'm, I'm not quite sure I liked it as much as I think I did. <laughs> really? I, like, I want to go back. I want to go back okay. and like okay. figure that one out. Have you watched any of the other like making of documentaries they've done on Marvel stuff? Oh, I watch all of them. Okay, hell yeah, dude! I freaking well, love the making I've only, of shit. I've only seen the one for Eternals and Hawkeye. <laughs> the one for Shang Chi was pretty bitchin'. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's check that one out. Um. Let's see. I I feel like I got tricked. The it's called Obi Wan Kenobi: A Jedi's Return. Which is basically just a making of. <laughs> Dude, I thought the same thing when I first saw that announcement on Facebook. I'm like, holy shit, they're doing something else? No. Damn, it's just a freaking making of. I uh, know. I was like, oh shit, next season, bitch. <laughs> just call it the making of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Don't try to, like, drop Confuse this fancy us. shit on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Then there's another show called Remembering, which this one's supposed to be pretty cool. So it's supposed to have, um, so it's a movie about a writer played by um, Brie Larson who is writing a story but forgets what her idea was when her phone rings. And the cool thing is it has a an augmented reality app. And so you can, like, use it to shine, or, like, put it on the on the movie hmm. and the it will like give you stuff to look at within the the movie itself like it'll be triggered by certain scenes and then you can like do like an AR experience it's it, it the it's it seems interesting hmm. so i'm like really interested in seeing that cuz i'm like super for like the AR augmented reality shit so that seems pretty cool. I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Um, let's see. A Welcome to the Club. It's a new short from The Simpsons. And then a another series called Tierra Incognita. And I don't know too much hmm. about that. It is a Latin-based show or oh, a Latin-based okay, series. Cool. So pretty cool. So it's a pretty solid lineup. Yeah. Seems like a really cool lineup. Definitely some things I'm more excited for than others, but I think for the most part, this is one of the better Disney Plus days that we've had. Fair. Fair. I can't remember what dropped last year. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, the only things that I remember that dropped, like, the first Disney Plus day when it, you know, officially dropped is the live-action Lady and the Tramp and then uh, that Christmas movie, Noel. Yeah, those are the only, like, those are big the... ones, and that's just because those are really good. Yeah, Noel, oh yeah, Noel doesn't get enough love. That was a really fun Christmas movie. That was a great Christmas movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's everything for uh, Disney Plus day. All right, cool. Um, well, uh, moving on from that, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis blessed us with some awesome news for Halloween ends today. Um, she she made a really like sweet video about her talking about how it's been like a privilege to have been able to play Laurie Strode for four decades, and you know just talking about how she thinks that this will this is a fitting conclusion to this saga um even though we all know it's not going to be the end it's going to be the end of lori strode but i'm sure that since the rights go back to the akkad family after this um i'm sure in a couple of years michael myers will be back um but she says that because last year with halloween kills you know with the pandemic and everything they decided to release 
Halloween Kills, uh, not only in theaters, but also on Peacock, uh, on the same day. So day and date. Um, and because of the success that they had with that one, um, not only at the box office, but also in the streaming numbers, they have decided to also do that with Halloween Ends. Um, so on October 14th, you can watch Halloween Ends not only in theaters, but also on Peacock. That's going to be the shit. Probably, unfortunately, probably going to get a lot more um, people, um, what's the word, pirating it, unfortunately. But you got to think, like, if they're willing to release it on Peacock, like, how bad did the pirating affect their numbers? Probably not all that much. Fair enough. That's a good point. Like, I think if it if it affected them too much, I think they would have been like, hey, no, like, we're releasing it in theaters. But just the fact that they are willing to release this on streaming is a huge deal. Yeah, I mean, I know with Universal right now, um, they, they've been doing the... I think it's like a 45-day window um, where uh, they'll release it in theaters, but then a month and a half later, um, it will come to stream. It will come to streaming, and you can pay like twenty, I think like twenty bucks to rent it, because um, it happened with uh, the Black Phone a couple months ago, and it happened with the Bad Guys and everything. But this is the first. I this is the first one in a while that they're doing that. Um, no, you don't have to pay to rent it. On stream, you if you have Peacock Premium, you can watch it that way, or you can go see it in theaters. Yeah, dude, freaking the Peacock subscriptions are gonna freaking skyrocket. I hope so, considering I mean, yeah, this is the final time that Jamie Lee Curtis will ever play Laurie Strode. So, hell yeah, it's really sad to think. <laughs> I don't want this to end. <laughs> All I know is this better be the goriest and bloodiest showdown in history. And they have Freddy vs. Jason to um, go up against, so they got, a, they got a lot to live up to when it comes to gory showdowns. <laughs> Straight up. Um, yeah, so we're definitely freaking doing that. Like, yes. opening weekend. Yes, I'm so excited. Yeah, they I say did. that, um, w- oh, sorry. No, I was just saying, I, from some forums that I follow, um, Big Screen is starting to look into offering a in-app browser. Well, it's about damn time. Yeah, so as soon as they do that, we'll be able to watch Peacock from from the Big Screen app. So I'm hoping that they knock that out fairly soon. Yeah, before if October. not, we'll have to figure something out. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Um, shit. Oh, um, I I hear some people are saying that with this announcement, that we'll probably be getting another trailer soon. I hope so. Yeah. Are you I gonna watch it? Or are you gonna try and avoid? <laughs> See, that's the problem with me. I'm like, oh, I don't want to see any more, but at the same time, I do. I know I'm such. That's a my problem. Whore. <laughs> yeah, dude. Right. I avoid TV spots if I can. Yeah. Um, but trailers. That's where I, I draw the line. TV spots, yeah. I will not watch, but I'm a sucker for a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Yeah, uh, and especially with Halloween, yeah, I'm sure I'll be watching the second trailer. God damn it. <laughs> um, I anyway. love how we always seem to go with, like, oh, this isn't happening, or, like, oh, what was I saying? Not, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, like, how with trailers, we always seem to be like, yeah, this is the last one I'm watching, and then we talk about, like, the next trailer, like, the following episode, and we're like, yeah, I do. See that like, <laughs> Uh, but I hope that they learn it, when we do get a second trailer. I hope that because I feel the first trailer did such a great job of like giving you what you wanted to see, but like not giving away like literally anything at all, which is what you want in a movie trailer. And so I'm hoping the same thing happens with the second trailer because f- they gave away way too much in the Halloween Kills trailers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like they gave away I would way have too freaking much. 
I don't like don't get me wrong, it was cool seeing in the trailers, but I would have loved to have seen the Michael slaughtering all of those firefighters on the big screen for the first time and not in the trailer. Oh, dude. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cuz I think I've already said this on the podcast, but every single time when you when the one of the firefighters is literally just he like looks over in the distance and he's I think he says what what the f is that? Um, and you just see Michael Myers walk through the bur- the burning door in slow mo, and oh my god, it's so beautiful! I love it, and just the heavy breathing, and <sighs> yeah, yeah, that was freaking borderline iconic. Have you seen the? Um, I don't know if you follow Nick Castle at all, but did you see his uh post a couple weeks ago? Uh, that I did not. Um, so he uh, shared the image of him because um, I guess when he does the breathing for Myers, he takes his hands like this and clasps. Or I know no one can see this. <laughs> he takes his hands and clasps them together and does the breathing breathing that way. Um, and so he was doing that, and he said, "Breathing shape into the breathing life into the shape one last time." I'm just like that is so no. cool. Yeah, I'm like that's sad, but you know. That's awesome. That I'm really happy that they brought the original Michael Myers back to have um, some a a part in this uh, trilogy. So absolutely, like that just kind of adds a, a level of just special to. A yeah, film I like agree. That. Yeah, absolutely agree. And his freaking breathing is iconic as Myers. <laughs> um. Uh, but that's. Unless you got anything else you want to say about Halloween ends. No, I'm I'm really excited. I'm so happy that I get to see this on streaming. So that's that's going to be freaking awesome. Dude, like honestly, and I I think I will go see it in the theaters also eventually, but just it seems every single time since and I think I've already said this, ever since COVID or like after since the movie theaters reopened after COVID, Every single time I go, it is the, my movie experience is ruined because someone pulls out a phone. Every single freaking movie I go see. Yup. <laughs> and it's really frustrating. Dude, I am and so I swear sick to God, of people. Yeah. I swear to God, if anyone pulls one out for Halloween ends, that bitch is going into my hand and that bitch is getting freaking chucked across the freaking room. Dude, how funny would it be if we're watching it in big screen if they like had a phone that, like prop that you can grab? <laughs> Caleb, all I can say is don't you fucking dare. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. That shit, that'd be hilarious though. I'll be on the next flight out there to bitch slap you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I absolutely believe that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nothing else from me about Halloween ends. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, well, in that case, uh, what do you say we move on to our headliner? I say let's do it. Alright, so for this week's headliner, we'll be breaking down Mr. Peabody and Sherman. And I know this is way out of left field for us because we said that we were going to do nope. Um, But that did not happen, um, unfortunately. But we still got a very good movie to talk about. And the way that this came across us reviewing is really kind of funny. Because Caleb said that he was looking for something to watch with Iris and... He couldn't find anything on Hulu or Netflix or Paramount Plus or even Disney Plus. So he goes on Peacock and he finds Mr. Peabody and Sherman. And he's like, hey, Rose has a soft spot for that movie. So I turned it on and he messaged me, hey, Rose, let's let's break down Mr. Peabody and Sherman. And I'm just like, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> Always take it. I will take any opportunity I can to talk about that movie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great movie. And we'll really we'll, we'll be getting into that. But yeah, I, I've kind of been in a tough spot 
<laughs> this week and last week. Um, the joys my, of being a father. Yeah, I'm <laughs> kind of living that single parent life <laughs> for these past two weeks. You're doing great. Yeah, because my my wife took a trip to to Utah for for a week, and she left a little earlier than expected. So I <laughs> had to record with with Iris being alone. And then I'm doing the same thing today because she gets back supposedly tomorrow. And yeah, so I need to have like all this shit done <laughs> out of the way. But Fun. yeah, we'll be back to like adult movies. <laughs> but I mean, maybe. I mean, we freaking. I was going to say, I love how you say that. Oh, well, yeah, and we've also done Encanto, and we've done quite a bit of child movies. Yeah. Or kids' movies. But yeah, so this is just one of those <laughs> ones where I'm like, dude, I I can't go see the movie that we're supposed to talk about. So eventually, we we'll should... stop promising that we'll do. <laughs> nope. You know what? We should have done Minions, considering you went and saw that with Iris. <laughs> that would have been a, a funny one to do too. Mm-hmm. Saying if you ever wanted to do that one, I'll I'll pay to go see it in theaters. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's um spoiler alert, not that special. <laughs> I mean, but it's a minion movie. Like, is anyone really that surprised? Maybe I'll maybe I'll make it like one of the mini recommendations that we do on TikTok. There we go. I like Which you can follow at the Elbros. Anyway. The way he did <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what's that? Okay, so, uh, Caleb, do you want to tell everybody how we break down movies on this podcast? I would love to. If you are new to our breakdown system, we have split movies into eight different categories that we individually score to come to a final All Bros letter grade. The eight categories that we score are story, writing, acting, character development, effects. With this being an animated movie, it's more going to be about the animation, uh, music, costumes, and then our own personal score at the very end. All of those numbers get magically added up and thrown into our algorithm and spat out a letter grade for us to compare it to other movies. Uh, So with that, if you have not seen Mr. Peabody and Sherman, you have had eight years to do so yeah so i think had eight years yeah i think uh you're past the point of being able to bitch about it if we spoil it for you (laughs) yeah he's right he's right yeah so uh rose is about to read the entire synopsis so if you haven't seen the movie spoiler alert now and uh yeah take it away rose all right Mr. Peabody is a gifted anthropomorphic dog who lives in a penthouse in New York City with his uh, adopted human son, seven-year-old Sherman, and tutors him by traveling throughout history using the Wayback. They visit Marie Antoinette and Versailles during the French Revolution in 1789. Getting caught in the reign of terror, Peabody is nearly sent to the guillotine to be executed by Maximilien Robespierre. I butchered his first name. Um, but escapes with Sherman through the Paris sewers. In the present day, Sherman attends the Susan B. Anthony School on his first day while Peabody struggles to come to terms with Sherman's growing maturity as he fears of losing his bond with him. Sherman's knowledge of the apocryphal nature of the George Washington cherry tree anecdote leads to a fight with one of his classmates, a bossy girl named Penny Peterson, in the cafeteria where she puts him in a chokehold, accusing him of being a dog since he was raised by Peabody. Peabody is called in by Principal Purdy as Sherman had bitten Penny in self-defense and also confronted by Miss Grunion, a child protective services agent who, suspe- who, who suspects that Sherman's behavior is due to being raised by a dog and plans to visit to their... and plans to... oh my god butchering this so bad and plans to visit to their home okay they f this up there there are way too many twos it's just and plans to visit their home to investigate 
uh, whether or not he is an unfit parent. Peabody invites Penny and her parents, Paul and Patty, over for a dinner party before Miss Grunion arrives. Penny calls Sherman a liar for claiming first-hand knowledge of history. Despite Peabody's contrary, contrary instructions, Sherman shows Penny the way back to show proof and take her takes her into the past where she stays in ancient Egypt in 1332 BCE to marry King Tut. Thir oh my god, I'm sorry. Sherman returns to get Peabody's help. Uh, Peabody hypnotizes the Pearsons and heads to Egypt to stop the wedding. Penny initially refuses to leave, hoping to achieve Tut's richer after... Tut's riches, god damn it, riches after he dies, until she is informed that she as well will be killed alongside Tut during the wedding and escapes with Peabody and Sherman. While trying to return, the Wayback runs out of power, so they stop at Renaissance Florence in 1508, where they meet Leonardo da Vinci and Lisa del... Oh my god, I'm going to butcher this so bad. Del Giocando? Sure. sure. <laughs> okay, I feel bad. <laughs> Pioneering Mona Lisa's famous smile. Penny and Sherman explore da Vinci's attic and find his flying machine. Penny goads Sherman into flying it, which he manages to do before crashing. Da Vinci is thrilled the device works, but Peabody is upset that Sherman was almost killed while also having destroyed a, a historical artifact. When they resume their journey, Sherman learns of Mrs. Gr Miss Grunion's plot to take him away and enters a fight with Peabody. As they feud, a black hole in time makes them crash land during the Trojan War in 1184 BCE. Upset about Peabody not trusting him, Sherman runs away and joins the army of King Ag Agant. Oh my god, Agamemnon in the Trojan horse, but reconciles with him during the battle. During the final parts of the Trojan War, Penny and Sherman are trapped inside the horse as it rolls towards a ravine. Peabody saves him, but seemingly dies during the attempt, causing Sherman to break down in tears while Penny comforts him. Feeling bad for his actions, Sherman decides to go home and pilots the way back to a few minutes before they left in the present to get Mr. Peabody's help to fix everything, despite Peabody's earlier warnings to never return to a time where, when they existed. As Sherman and Penny try to explain the situation, Sherman's earlier self shows up. When Grunion arrives, Peabody tries to conceal from the Petersons the presence of two Shermans, but the second Peabody arrives back from ancient Troy, complicating the situation. Troy... Tro Troy, oh my god, wow, sorry, I got confused. Troy Peabody reveals he survived the crash, much to Sherman's relief. Grunion attempts to collect both Shermans, but they and the Peabody's merge, which generates a massive cosmic shockwave. Grunion grabs Sherman and hurts him while attempting to take him away. The enraged Peabody bites Grunion in retaliation, and she calls the New York Police Department. Peabody, Penny, and Sherman race to the Wayback, but cannot time travel from a rip in the space-time continuum caused by the merging of their cosmic doubles. The collision causes a portal to appear above New York, and historic objects and figures, many from earlier parts of the story, rain down everywhere in the city. Mr. Peabody crash lands the Wayback in Grand Army Plaza at the base of William well, Tecumseh Sherman's statue. Uh, historical figures and police officers quickly surround them while Grunion calls in animal control to arrest Peabody. Excuse me. Sherman explains everything was his fault, but Grunion contends that it is all because a dog cannot raise a boy. Sherman counters with, if being a dog means being as loving and loyal as Peabody is, then he is proud to be a dog as well. Penny, her parents, the historical figures, and others all make the same pledge. George Washington grants Peabody a presidential pardon, which is supported by Abraham Lincoln and Bill Clinton, forcing the authorities to leave Mr. Peabody alone. Leading to possibly one of the best jokes in a children's movie. <laughs> yep. When larger objects such as the Sphinx, the RMS Titanic, and the Florence Cathedral begin falling through the rib, the people of the present and the past are forced to brainstorm ideas to prevent disaster. Peabody and Sherman take off in the way back and travel into the future for a few minutes, successfully undoing the, cha undoing the damage. The historical figures are dragged back to their respective times with Agam... Agam... Oh my god, Agamemnon abducting Grunion back to his own time as she vows revenge on Peabody. Sherman returns to school, 
having become great friends with Penny, and finally begins to develop his relationship with Peabody further, officially referring to him as father. History has become con- what, wow. contaminated with modern traits. Tut throwing a New York-themed party, Da Vinci and Del Giocando pioneering pop art, Washington and Benjamin Franklin competing over the value of the banknotes with their respective faces on them, Albert Einstein becoming enraged when he is unable to solve a Rubik's Cube, Robespierre falling, failing to use a taser properly, and Grunion and Agamemnon married in the Trojan horse by, oh uh, my god, Odysseus, uh, Odysseus, after Grunion accepts his love. Oh my god, I butchered that so bad. That's one of my worst ones in a while. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that one wasn't ideal. <laughs> but you did your best, and that's why we love it. <laughs> Whew. Jeez, kind of a complicated story. <laughs> when you, like... A, a little bit. I didn't think it was this complicated, but, you know, I mean... I know, it didn't seem like it wrote was. This. But yeah, they <sighs> overall, I think the movie like works pretty well. Like being being like an asshole critic, though, <laughs> I think it starts to fall apart when you kind of get into the nitty gritty details of it. I think they just try to throw way too much into it. It just kind of like not like. <sighs> They overflow the cup a little bit. And it's just kind of... The story seems very full. And it's like a lot of like mini micro stories. Fair enough. And so it just kind of feels like cluttered a little bit. Yeah, that's... I, I will admit, um, honestly, uh, my favorite part like i feel like the first 20 minutes are my favorite part and that's just because it's mostly focusing on just peabody and sherman um i feel once like they go to the dinner party and everything um i get what they were trying to do you know like they have to come up with a good way for to use the way back and everything for for the plot but i i agree with you it does kind of get a little wishy-washy i don't know if that's a the good a good way to explain it um, but just it, yeah. it just like, feels like they're trying to do so much in so little time. Yeah, I think I think something that would have been interesting for them to do, like alternatively, because I mean, did the did Mister Peabody and Sherman in the original show did they time travel? That yes, you know they of? did. They did. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. I think what I would have done, because it just felt like a continuation of, like, of the story, like, from the original show, it just felt like a continuation, so it's just like, hey, like, they're still time traveling or whatever. I think because this is a brand new experience for younger viewers, I think they should have just gone solely with it being for the purpose of educating Sherman. I think what they could have done was show that Mr. Peabody can basically do anything and then he's teaching this boy how to do everything but he goes to school and he comes home with a bad history test and so he's just like the best way to learn is to experience it and so he goes and then he like builds the way back and then they have their adventures that way. You know what? The, that's just, yeah, I don't know. I would I would have loved to um see Mr. P like I don't know. I would have loved the focus of the movie to be how Mr. Peabody got the idea for I mean, he does explain why he got the idea for the way back, but I would love to see the actual process into building it. Yeah. I I don't know if like the process of building it could would have been super interesting. It could have been a good like montage Fair. though. That's true, um, but no, I get where you're coming from um, because I know in the original show, um, God damn it, um, I swear they did something like that with with you with like how you're saying like with Sherman's math test, 
or sorry, history test. Um, I swear they they I swear they did something like that. But just yeah. uh, like I I agree with you, like something like a uh, a reason for them to go back in time because of Sherman makes more sense. Yeah, I think that would have been a little bit better. And then you get into like the full blown the hijinks of um like the time travel and i think you could have had the same story where maybe each time that they traveled because of something sherman broke or whatever was causing ripples in time and then like when they eventually went back to their time then it's like the grand portal opened and then they had to basically just do exactly what they did in this one it's just changing the changing the um the catalyst of this movie instead of it being like because it it just felt like that time travel thing wasn't super important until it was fair enough like there was no yeah. reason for them to like other than it's like hey they used to time travel so now they're time traveling here but sherman has to go to school and he's getting bullied and he invites like the the family over to like resolve this conflict and then she calls or then the, the little brat bitch calls Sherman a, a liar and so he has to prove to her that she that they do have a time machine it just feels very convoluted for Do you know what slime that always like makes me mad um is that you know with you uh how Penny like tells Sherman oh yeah you're a liar the whole when um he first shows her the way back, and he's just like, oh, you know, Mr. Peterbody uh, says I can't drive it until I'm older. And she's just like, you listen to everything that Mr. Peabody says? Do you know what that makes you? He's like, an obedient son? <laughs> he's like, no, a dog. I'm like, no, that makes him an obedient son. Yeah. I don't know freaking... what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Like, she's just doubling down on her freaking bullying. Yeah, seriously. Like... We get it. He's a dog, makes... but he's a different kind of dog. Yeah, it it did. I did not care for it. I would have eliminated the Penny character altogether. I uh, yeah, I I honestly would have too. Because it's just like I said, it just gets too. It becomes too much, and you're just like, okay, now we're dealing with this. Now we're dealing with because. <sighs> Like, what I'm also thinking, too, is, like, when they got trapped in, like, the Renaissance with Da Vinci, and then they, they're, they like, building this machine to charge the way back. Like, what the hell was up with that? Like, it, it just, it was very, and I know this is a kid's movie, and I'm not going to be docking it, like, super harsh. It's just little things I feel they could have improved upon immensely would have really really helped with the uh the overall flow of the story it just they it just felt like they're trying to cram too much in here and i think that they could have had the exact same story of peabody and sherman and their like growth together as a father and son unit you could have had all of that in a much different story yeah, I agree. Because yeah, the, the relationship they set up between Peabody and Sherman is fantastic. It's a great father-son dynamic. Yeah, they did a great job with that. Like It was so fun to watch. And it's interesting to see how at the beginning of the movie, they it, it does really kind of start off like feeling like Sherman is just like Peabody's ward or something. Yeah. And then how it eventually grows to feel like a little bit more fatherly. Yeah. So I think the movie did an excellent job with that. Um, It's just, like I said, it's just plot wise. Eh. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that they wanted to go like grand scale for a Mr. Peabody and Sherman movie. And this is probably the only way they could think like, Oh, you know, like how we, can we um, get it to where, you know, like they mess up the, the past. And so all of a sudden all these um, famous historical, historical figures um, literally just crash land into New York at the end. Just 
like I, I get you want it to you want to make it big, um, especially because I feel that a lot of people did not watch Mr. Peabody and Sherman, um, because uh, if I'm being honest, like this was my first introduction to these characters. I didn't watch the shorts until after this movie. I know that they were always attached with Rocky and Bullwinkle. Um, of course, I watched that, um, but um, I I get that they probably wanted to try to be like, oh hey, you know, like. Let's make this big scale so maybe that can get people to watch the old cartoons after they see this movie. But I feel that they could have still kept it more tame, but still had a great story. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you on that one. Um, yeah. I think if you really wanted to include Penny in this... Maybe have that conflict where Penny's calling Sherman a liar because he's sharing like, hey, like me and my, like me and Mr. Peabody have traveled into the past. And then she's like, liar. And then have her like, see, like, see the truth. Like, see, we're actually have a time machine and like all that at the end after their like big adventure, like kind of wrap that little side story up like if you really wanted to include penny yeah no that that's a good point like it it just it would have penny just kind of threw a wrench in everything and it wasn't great and i think that's more of a writing issue so i'm not going to dock because of penny yet but i will be docking <laughs> because of penny <laughs> uh so personally with story I think I'm sitting around like an 84. Okay. I'm going to go one point higher than you. 85. Yeah, like, I, I totally understand, like, the, like, like we've stated, we're not the target audience for this, and I think it made enough sense for kids, but from a critic's perspective, it just, it had issues. Yeah. And I think if we were being like complete and utter assholes, I'd be down in like the seventies. <laughs> but we give fair fair scores on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or as fair as we feel they deserve. And because we're not the target audience and it just it made enough sense for kids, that's why I think it scored as high as it did. Yeah, agreed. Alright, next up we got writing. Dude, the freaking jokes in this were pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there is literally only one joke that I I rolled, and that's just because I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, they gotta have some, you know, funny kid humor, and it's just the um, Sherman saying like, oh, well, you can't marry him, you can't marry King Tut because first of all, his name rhymes with butt. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I'm, ugh. dude. For, I have such a weird sense of humor because it's either like super dark, twisted shit or it's dad jokes. So for me, <sighs> Mr. Peabody's dad jokes landed every single time. <laughs> uh, for, like, I freaking love his I jokes. I mean, but he makes some really good ones. The freaking, oh, but you know what they say if first you don't succeed, Troy, Troy again. Like, I know. I love it. <laughs> Dude, I I was laughing so hard with shit like that. Dude, uh, dad jokes just hit my funny bone. Like something awful. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then, oh my gosh. And then like we kind of like led into it while you were reading the synopsis. The Bill Clinton joke? Holy oh shit. Oh my dude. god. I can't believe they even put this joke in the movie, but boy, am I happy they did. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, when Mr. Peabody is getting the presidential pardon for biting the social worker from George Washington and it gets endorsed by Abraham Lincoln, Bill Clinton comes off to the side and he's like, yeah, I've done worse things. <laughs> Dude, I laughed so hard, it scared Iris. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I, that was so freaking funny. I can't believe they got away with putting that in the movie. <laughs> Dude, you know what would have been like the uh, 
tipping of the iceberg is if they had freaking um, Hillary Clinton in the background just going like, mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like the freaking cat from Puss in Boots. <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh. That would just be so great. Oh, speaking of, just like total side note, they that cat is in the new Puss in Boots movie. <gasps> yes. I, yeah. Did that just solidify that we have to review that one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Freaking lootly. Cool. Cool. Anyway, <laughs> getting back <laughs> on track. <laughs> like, if I didn't bring it up now, I, w- I would have forgotten. Fair enough. Um. Yeah, it's, dude. I was really impressed with the writing. Like, not all the jokes landed. I think the um. Like whenever Mr. Peabody would make a dad joke and Sherman would laugh and be like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, that got old fast. It, like, I think the first two times it was funny, but the, at the after the third, it was like, okay, mm-hmm. dude, like, stop. <laughs> and really quick, I want your opinion. Um, why is it so funny? Or why do people think it's funny to have um, babies naked bums shown in animated films maybe i don't don't find that funny (laughs) okay Uh, i I don't find it that cute it's it's i mean don't give me like i'm not uh, yeah i mean i don't know i'm trying to sound like a dick here um but i mean i i will fully admit like when so in the movie um when the Mr. Peabody's going through this whole montage of um, Sherman growing up, there's a part where Gandhi is holding Sherman and his diaper falls down. Um, no, I maybe giggled a little bit, but just, I don't know, like, I'm not the biggest fan of those kind of things. I will admit, though, it's a better representation of doing something like that than the freaking boss baby when they sprinkle the powder on his bum and then they touch his butt and then he farts it. I'm like... That's not funny. That's you gross. Gotta think, Rose. We're not the target audience for this. To kids, butts are funny. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Good point. And it's either I feel like, the boss baby have... does a little too much, though. Yes, absolutely. But you got to think too. Like they can't do adult butts. True. I'm just so, amazed that they can do kid butts. I like, I know. I think we they just need to get away from doing butts in general. Like I if you want to do fart jokes and f- like whatever, like have at it. But yeah. No no more naked bums. Yeah. I you know what? I think would be even funnier than just like straight up just butts. If you did hmm. like the plumber's crack. I think plumber's oh, yeah, crack see. jokes are so much funnier than bare butt jokes. Yeah, I agree. Like, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun with freaking jokes like that. But I digress. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, like where script-wise, where I think this movie kind of falls apart is with Penny. Penny oh, sucks. God. Seriously. And yes, we know that the movie tries to redeem her at the end. I No. Still hate her. Hate her. Dude, it, like, the crush that Sherman has on Penny, why? Yeah, exactly. It should have come out that Penny has a crush on Sherman. That would have made more sense. That would have made way more sense. And it's like, yeah, she, like, was making fun of him because she likes him. Like, that would have tracked so much better than Sherman being like, maybe I like Penny. Why? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> She's a little shit to you. She is giving you no reason to like her, yeah. Sherman. Be better. <sighs> oh, man. And honestly, for the amount of times that she disrespects his father, like, su- oh my god, she's such a little shit. Yeah, dude. I was like, when she was freaking making like those dog comments in ancient Egypt, yeah, ex- mm. I was just like, "Bitch, he could bite you and 
be completely in the right. <laughs> yeah. The and the fact that like she pushes that whole like fight that uh Peabody and Sherman have in the the way back and like how um she he he uh she put it so much into his head that oh whenever Peabody talks to me it's like he thinks that I'm a dog. Um and it's so sad that it got to the point that Peabody had to say, no, Sherman, you're not a dog. You're just a very bad boy. Yeah, I know. Dude, she, she's the worst. Like, it was such bullshit plot issues. Like, you could have gone around, like, gotten the same result in a much better way. Absolutely. Like, you did not need Penny to freaking throw the wrench in it because she just becomes super unlikable like even yeah at the end i still didn't like her even after she no, had didn't. like supposedly been redeemed yeah no she didn't so i mean i'm not docking a ton for her because i think the jokes overall landed fairly well and the dialogue was pretty decent like i really enjoyed the discussion between peabody and da vinci Talking about like yes. Sherman growing up and kind of like having to find his own way and and all that. Like I I love that. Same here. Like they had a lot of like really good, solid, heartfelt moments, and that along with the amazing jokes, like puts me fairly high with the writing. Like where where are you sitting at? Um, I'd say I'm slightly lower than the story, and I mean I agree with you with the really, re- it's it's Penny. It she really kills it for me. Um. Okay. So, so I'm gonna go on eighty three. Damn, I did not think that I was gonna be nicer to this movie than you. <laughs> I mean, this is just the writing. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going the opposite direction. I'm heading to like. In eighty-seven, okay. for writing, eh? No, I'm gonna give it an extra point. I'm gonna go eighty-eight. I think I enjoyed I like... it just enough, like more than you, <laughs> to yeah, to give it that high. Okay. All right, moving on over to acting, we have Ty Burrell who voiced Mister Peabody. Max Charles, who voiced Sherman. And then we have Ariel Winter, who voiced Penny Peterson. Those are like the main big names. Um, Any other like big names that you can think of? or? Uh, I mean, all I can think of is uh, Stephen Colbert, who played Penny's dad. Um, didn't Jenny Slate play your mom? No, not Jenny Slate. Uh, no, Leslie Mann. That's who, thank you. Leslie Mann, um, and then, oh my god. Oh, what's Dude, I don't know what it is. Leslie Mann has an amazing, like, cartoon voice. She does. It's so good. She needs to do more voiceover work. I think she does. Like, don't get me wrong, I love her acting, but I think she does much better with her, like, the animated stuff. I agree. Um, I can't remember. Allison Janning. That's her name. Plays Miss Grunion. I love Allison. She... Or is it Janney or... Oh, Janie. Janie. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Allison um, Janie. Oh my gosh, dude. I love her. She plays a, once again, a bitch so well. Oh my god, I freaking hated her. But I love her Dude, she does time. so good. Like, she play Like, it seems like any cart or animated role that she has she's playing that like she was playing the the head of the homeowners association and over the hedge she was the freaking remodel it lady from the adams family she was i forgot about that uh, <laughs> i think bitch. the only one the only one that i can think of off the top of my head where she wasn't like horrible was when she was playing the starfish in Finding Nemo. Oh my, oh, dude! I totally forgot that was her. I've watched a lot of the old Disney movies lately. 
I love it. Yeah, so I freaking love Allison Janey, dude. She's an she, American treasure. She is. Oh my god, I love her so much. But yeah, her Miss Grunion was freaking scary, dude. Yeah, ser- oh my god. Terrifying. Yeah. Uh, didn't like that at all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, like those kind of cover the, the big ones. Um... Trying to think if they had like any other like big names. Doesn't look like it. Do, I don't know if you noticed this. Oh, freaking! No, oh, sorry. No, sorry. You go. No, I was gonna say freaking Stanley Tucci played Leonardo da Vinci. I did not know that. I didn't that is either. awesome. That's that epic. is awesome. And then of course we we know with uh, Agamem- Agamemnon. Uh, voiced by Patrick Warburton. Like, I mean, can you get any better than that? Yes. Oh my God. Like, so good. good. Like, great artist. cast. Uh, like, a, yeah. an amazing cast. Like, even Penny. Like, I'm not like I'm not the biggest fan of Penny, but it is not the actress's fault. <laughs> no, it's yeah. It's literally the lines that she was giving, but given. Yeah. But she 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 does a great job. Conveying that, oh yeah, you're supposed to hate me. I'm a little shit. Yeah. And somehow it kind of makes it funnier that Ariel Winter voiced Penny. Because she plays Alex Dunphy in Modern Family. With Ty Burrell. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, so... um, I am interested to hear your top three all right here it goes number three i'm gonna give to allison janney for miss grunion two i will give to max charles for sherman and number one i have to give to ty burrell for mr peabody i freaking love his voice so much as him but both them did great as mr peabody and sherman but ty burrell just is his voice i feel is so calming and it fits so perfectly with mr peabody that just oh chef's kiss for dude he has a great cadence to his voice with peabody yes like it is so freaking good like i i love for whatever reason like it's not my favorite line or anything but i love the way that when he was talking about his his past and like being adopted um i love the way that he like talks to the that kid about throwing the stick <laughs> he's like fetch boy and he's like why aren't you aren't you just gonna go throw it again <laughs> Like it, it, it's just like the cadence in his voice, and like it's very like matter of fact and very monotone is not the right word because it kind of does have like a mo... it has moments of like inflection where he kind of has like more enthusiasm behind his his tone. But it's it's very like matter of fact, but like like you said in a, like a calming way, yeah. Like it's such an interesting voice. Like Ty Burrell, I freaking love Ty Burrell, dude. But dude, I freaking love the kid though in that scene where he's just like, I don't want this one, mommy. He's sarcastic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then like I love the way that he changes his tune. He's like, wait, wait, <laughs> like I'll fetch. I'll bark, I'll even shake hands. Bark, bark. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I absolutely agree with your number one. Uh, same with number two. I think Sherman was like, was just a great, he like he had a solid voice. I mean, it wasn't like anything groundbreaking by any means. Like, I think... It, it, most of the time with our like top three, I think one and two are usually pretty close. I think in this instance, they're pretty separated. 
Fair enough. Where, like, with some movies, I'll have, like, a number one and then, like, a 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah. This is, like, a number one and a number two. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then my number three, I'm actually going to give to Stanley Tucci for his Leonardo da Vinci. I love it. Yeah. Excellent I, choice. I, they had, and I think it was just the way that they were playing off of each other between Peabody and, and da Vinci. The He, like, almost sounded sad, but, it like... A bittersweet, a bittersweet voice where he knew what he was saying was like, had some sad tones about it, but it was like in a happy way, like kind of like bringing it, like the tone back up, like saying something sad about bringing the mood up <laughs> in, in a way where it's, it kind of like levels itself out in a way, but it, it, su- like there was such an amazing way that I, like he, he was able to make me feel. Like, it's just like, oh, man, like, yeah, this sucks. But, I mean, but think about the, like, the excitement, the adventure of this. And, and all, like, I was like, yeah, I get pumped. But then I'm like, oh. <laughs> like I said, like, I think I worded it best just saying bittersweet. And I think he was able to portray that, like, amazingly. So that his performance stand out a little bit higher. Like, if he's my number three, Miss Grunion's, like, right there <laughs> at number right, four. Uh... Yes, I love it. But uh, yeah, so um, what are you thinking with acting? Honestly, I'd say it's my highest one so far. Um, just for how much I loved the uh, Ty Burrell. Um, I'm gonna actually go a ninety-one. Wow. Yeah, I'm not. Not quite as high. There was like there were some extras that I wasn't super impressed with. Um, fair enough. Oh, uh, what's his name? Robespierre. I wasn't super impressed. Like I think he just went a little too heavy on the French accent. That's fair. Yeah. Um. And, then, and I also want to comment with, like Marie Antoinette. I feel that's fair. I feel his joke though. When he said a uh, cantaloupe is the lowest of the fruits, I have to absolutely disagree with him there. <laughs> it is not. I'll I'll agree with him on that one. Freaking wow. cantaloupes suck. Oh, Dude, I wow. hate cantaloupes. They taste so like <sighs> they're like watermelon's reject cousin. Oh, dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you haven't had your bro pick you out the perfect cantaloupe. I'm just saying. If I can do that. Because cantaloupes (laughs) suck ass. Okay, you know, okay. (laughs) Wait, no, when I'm out there next, it won't be cantaloupe season. Never mind. Okay, next summer, when I come out, I'm going to pick the perfect cantaloupe from you for the perfect cantaloupe for you from Kroger. And if you hate it still then, then I'll accept it. But I won't accept your answer until you try a perfect cantaloupe. Deal? Fine. Okay. I've had I've had my mind changed with fruit before with like mangoes. Or not mangoes, peaches. Huh. Okay. So I, I'm willing to give cantaloupe another shot, but Okay. As of right now, cantaloupe freaking like sucks. <laughs> you bastard! Like the, the way that I view cantaloupe is the way that I view the cousin that goes to an Ivy League school and comes back, and he's just like all uppity, and like all he wants to talk about is freaking Harvard or some shit. Oh well, at uh, Harvard they do this, and then <laughs> then watermelons like the co- freaking voice, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then and then freaking like watermelons like the cool cousin that's like took a year off of school just to like get high and do cool shit. 
<laughs> Dude, that was so funny. Yeah, I can do voices too. <laughs> Uh, well, we need to not, hear more of know, them, man. Not, not any, I know. I know. I just get, I'm I get real self conscious about it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. I get you. I get you. Uh, but um, yeah, my acting. I'm kind of like it was nothing too impressive to me, other than Ty Burrell's performance. But everyone else just kind of was. Maybe average or slightly below. So I think I'm sitting at like an 85. All right. All right. Next up, we got character development. Which this one, I feel like you could have done either Peabody or Sherman. Yeah, you can. Like, who who did you end up doing? I I honestly did Peabody. What about you? I was actually leaning more towards Sherman. So you make but, you make your argument for yours, and I'll make uh, the okay. argument for mine. Okay, all right. Um, so with Peabody, um, I love how we start off with um, you know, him uh, first uh, finding Sherman in an alleyway, um, taking him to court, get actually being able to adopt him. And I love how he starts it off like firsthand. Hey, no, I'm not. You don't call me dad. It's just Mr. Peabody or in less formal occasions, just Peabody. And throughout the whole movie, I love just seeing um, uh, their father son connection just grow and grow and grow. Um, And even, you know, they even have some conflicts along the way, um, considering that, uh, I feel that Penny like really sets this all into motion and like challenging their father son dynamic and how um, Mr. Peabody um, has to deal with uh, Sherman, you know, getting older and branching off into the world. And like you said, with um, Leonardo da Vinci and him talking uh, about this Um, and just all that, the whole fight between them and the way back with uh, uh, Mr. Peabody, um, Re, you know, having to reassure Sherman nothing's going to happen, but then him basically saying, like, hey, no, you just need to stop. I'm not calling you a dog. I'm just saying that you're a very bad boy. Um, but then, you know, them finally reconciling at the end, getting back into uh, their father-son dynamic, and then I love that it uh, ends on um, Mr. Peabody actually finally um, um, saying, I love you, to Sherman instead of in, uh, oh my God, um, towards kind of like yeah, the beginning. I have a very of the... high regard for you. <laughs> yes, yeah, I love that he grows from that to actually saying, "I love you." Um, um, yeah, and I love that Sherman. Uh, once he says that, he just smiles and he's just like, "I have a deep regard for you as well, Mister Peabody." <laughs> That's yeah, I love that so much. Um, and I freaking love that Peabody's last line is no doubt about it. Every dog should have a boy. And so. I know, dude, that line was just, it was so freaking sweet. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so over, I, I mean, for me, I think, uh, Peabody it's, I mean, it's probably not like a super, um, detailed, um, character development because he's still, I, I feel like he's still a good father at the beginning, but by the end, he's grown to be an even better father. He's he was never a bad father. It's just he got a little better. He understands his understands his son more, and so. Yeah, I thought it, yeah, it was a pretty pretty decent arc. Um, yeah, I went with Sherman, and it's mainly because. I know that he wasn't necessarily like the focus of this movie. It was mostly focused around Mr. Peabody, but I think he kind of had a very like indirect character growth that I I found really interesting where he kind of starts off just kind of accepting and doing whatever Mr. Body tells him to. Like for the most part, I mean, they get, in trouble, obviously, because of some things that Sherman does. But 
I think that like he starts off just being like this very naive character, not really thinking too much of the world around him and he like he's taking in like the knowledge, but he's just not making his own choices it feels like because he's like he's always like like i noticed at the beginning he was very much like like do like what do i do mr peabody like what do i do what do i do what do i do like constantly asking things like that where near the end he was actually coming up with ideas like it was his idea to jump to the future it was his idea to like fly or whatever the hell. So it was, he kind of came into his own. And then like the scene that stands out the most to me is when he's driving to school with Mr. Peabody, he's like having this discussion that kind of in relation to like, or to not to not relation to reflect the conversation that they were having earlier where Mr. Peabody was the one giving him all these notes of what to do throughout the day. It was Sherman giving Peabody the notes of what to do throughout the day. And it it was just, it was nice because it felt like Sherman was making his own decisions. And like, yes, he was growing up and becoming more. And I know that we both freaking hate Penny. (laughs) but So much. She was like the the driving force for that growth. That's a good point, and I I really did appreciate that. But again, like as you said, not the best arc in the world. I'd actually put Mister Peabody's a little bit higher, especially with how you explained it. Oh, I feel um, like you explained Sherman's very well. Yeah, but I mean, his. Just wasn't like top notch or anything. I get you. Like personally, where I would put, I would put Sherman's arc about like seventy eight, seventy nine. Okay. And then Peabody's, I'd go a little higher into like the eighty five, eighty six range. So I think I'm going to average that out and go into like an 82. I'm going to agree with you with what you said with Peabody's arc at 85 or 86. And yeah, I'm going to go in 85. Alrighty, next up we got effects, which is going to be like the animation. I think they did a, a great job transitioning for how they looked in the original animated shorts um, to now. Um, or... To, to this, um, I will say uh, Sherman definitely had a lot shorter hair um, in the animated um, shorts, but I, I feel that um, the way that they set him up in this one, I mean, they never touch upon his hair, but I, I feel that the way that he's animated in this, his um, longer kind of spiked up hair works. Um, yeah, I I thought the animation was, was great. I mean, it's DreamWorks, so you definitely expect their humans to not their human characters to maybe not look exactly like Pixar human characters. Um, so like maybe like a little cartoony, but like not too much. Um, but I mean, especially, I mean, Mr. Peabody looked fantastic. Um, I feel that wasn't really that hard. You really couldn't F up transitioning him from, the shorts to the movie, but I mean, even the freaking like fur on him looked great. That, that really stood out. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have a lot of problems with the animation. Yeah. I, I didn't have too many. I did kind of, I, I might be crazy in feeling this, but I felt like the human figure, like Mr. Peabody was fine. Cause Mr. Peabody is already like a very stiff character or comes off that way. Um, but the rest of the people, like the humans, they also felt like they were very stiff in their movements. It was very like very upright, like perfect posture, which I know this is like a weird gripe, but it just it felt like everyone was like very uniform in their movements and I felt like they could have gotten away with like 
giving some fresh movement yeah. to to people or at least given some variation because i felt like everyone moved the same and i don't know like i said i think it, it might be a weird gripe <laughs> i get where you're coming i mean i didn't really feel that way but i can understand where you're coming from um I don't know, I, I felt the characters all moved in different ways, and I mean, I, I, I can see where you're coming from with, like, the, like the stiffness, like, the standing up posture. Um, maybe that's what they wanted to set up in this universe, that, like, everyone is, like, so strict except for, um, uh, or, like, everyone should be, like, standing stuff like that except for Peabody. Right. I don't know, like something about that just didn't sit right with. I'm not going to be docking like significantly. It's just kind of like, <laughs> like I said, a minor gripe. Um, like I said, I get you. That, I I didn't see it, but that that's yeah. just me. But I can understand where you're coming from. Um, but yeah, absolutely agree with you. The texturing on the fur and the hair was pretty good. Um, I did learn fairly recently that the technology to do different hairstyles has just like very recently come out like with with oh, really? like Encanto's or Encanto's one of the first movies to incorporate the new software for hair that's awesome yeah so they're able to do a lot of different hairstyles like with curls and and wavy hair and all that and like where you'll notice with a movie like Mr. Peabody and Sherman, everyone's hair is usually like pretty f- flat, like it's straight hair or it's up in some sort of do or like whatever. It's it's usually in a in an area where there's not a lot of movement, and if there is movement, like if someone's hair is down, it's not very complicated movement. Whereas like hair that's curly is kind of like springy. Hmm. So I thought that was kind of interesting and something that I was like yeah, paying attention is... to. Dude, I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah, kind of cool fun fact for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are you at with effects? Um, I'd say I'm in the high eighties. Um. I'm gonna go eighty-seven. I will actually meet you there. Sweet. All right. Next up, we got music. Which um, there was nothing a lot of really... songs in this that were pretty like iconic, but nothing really stood out. That's true. I mean, I feel the one um that stood out for me is. Like the end credits song, way back when, I feel it's a pretty damn good song. Um, but you know, I don't know. Other than that, like nothing hugely really stepped out to me, or stood out to me. Yeah, I know that they played a lot of clips of songs, but it wasn't like big songs, or it wasn't not big songs. It wasn't big parts of the scenes. It no, was just kind of yeah, like. I maybe like flashback moments yeah so i mean i wasn't like i said wasn't super impressed and i think maybe i'm leaning more towards an eight i can give you that yeah yeah all right next up we got costumes so this is more just With an animated movie, for those that don't know, this is like the um, the character design for these characters. Um, I feel with Mr. Peabody and Sherman transitioning with how they looked in the shorts to here, um, I love that they really didn't change anything. Um, if anything, the only ch- thing they changed... Um, actually, wait, no, they didn't, because I was going to say... Um, Sherman's shoes are different, but no, he basically wore like high top sneakers, and that's what he wears here, just like high top Converse. Um, but yeah, like literally, they're transitioned perfectly. Sherman wearing his classic white shirt with black shorts, and you know, of course, Peabody with the red bow tie, glasses. Just they looked great. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I think the character designs worked really well with, like, the other characters worked really well with um, the world that they set up. But Mr. Peabody and Sherman, like, you can absolutely, like, with the whole silhouette test that I, I go, you can absolutely tell that it's them. Oh, yeah. Hands down. Easy. Pfft. What are you sitting at? I might be at a nine. Absolutely agree. Sweet. I was surprised you didn't go to a ten because I probably would have gone that oh, way. Oh, really? Yeah. Just with how iconic they are, like Mr. Yeah. Peabody and Sherman, they like they, they're. I feel like they're a, a an iconic duo. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think a nine's pretty fair. <laughs> All right, last up, we got our own personal score. You want me to take this one? Sure. Um, overall, um, I really love this movie. Um, this is one of my favorite DreamWorks movies. Um, I love these characters, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, such great characters, and that they're well utilized in their own movie. And yeah, I, I know we said some negatives about this movie, but God, do I still love it. Um, so with that. How high do I want to go? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I am actually going to go a 91. Oh, damn. Dude, I love this movie still. Shit. Like, you're going to make me feel like an asshole. <laughs> I also really enjoyed this movie. It was, like, not nearly as much as Rose did. <laughs> it was very enjoyable. It is, like I said, it's it's just kind of cluttered. There's things that you can kind of pick apart here and there. But overall, like, it's a really good heartfelt movie. And it's fun, too. Like, from a kid's perspective, like, this is an, a hell of a good time. And for me, I think I'm... I'm like a 79. Like, I know that sounds oh, bad. I know, I know, kidding. I know that I'm sounds bad. <laughs> but I, I'm kidding. That is like the nicest that I could possibly be <laughs> to that, to that score. Like, I liked it. It's, it's just not, it's not my favorite animated movie. I mean, this, this is not my favorite either, but it's definitely up there. My, yeah, for me, it, for for me, it's it's middle middle of the road. Fair enough. Like Fair it's enough. one that I'm not going to be like, oh, I don't want to watch this, but it's also not going to be like my first choice either. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's where I'm. Uh, I'm sitting with it. Um, but that concludes this breakdown so the final or so let me go through the uh, the categories first so starting off with story we were sitting at an 84.5 writing is sitting one point exactly above that at an 85.5 acting scored way higher than than that uh sitting at an 88 Character development brought this movie down a little bit, sitting at an 83.5. Um, effects brings it right back up to an 87. Music, we said, was an 8. It was pretty good, just nothing too memorable or special. Um, costumes, solid 9 um, from both of us, just because of the iconic look about Mr. Peabody and Sherman. And then our personal score averaged out to an 85. With Rose, like, absolutely loving this film and me, like, being like, okay, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like you, like you texted me, I have a soft spot for this movie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but with that, the final All Bros letter grade for Mr. Peabody and Sherman has come to a... B plus. 
Yes. Yeah, it just cracked B plus. I'm happy. It was, it, it's a B+. It was seriously point zero six away from being a B. God damn! Wow. It just like our cutoff is eighty six percent. This scored an eighty six point zero six percent. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, it was freaking toit. <laughs> <laughs> it made it in like right under the freaking wire. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm pretty sure that's like the bottom of our. Apologies, had to pause for a quick second. Anyway, um, I was absolutely right. So, Mr. Peabody and Sherman is like the bottom of our B+. Plus. <laughs> Sad days. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Peabody and Sherman is right below Nightmare on Elm Street, which is at an 86.12%. It is below Spider-Man Homecoming, which is at an 86.22%. It is also below Sing 2, which is at an 86.25. It is below Captain Marvel, which is at an 86.25 as well. And then it is below the Lego Movie 2, which is at an 86.5. And then going the opposite direction... Um, the movies that I'm about to list are our B movies, not our B plus. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, it is above The Force Awakens, which is at an 85.81. It's above Halloween Kills, which is at an 85.68. <laughs> Okay, I'm okay with that. It is above Onward, which is at an 85.67. All right. It is wow, it beat also... a Pixar movie. Yeah, right? <laughs> it is also above Cruella, which is at an 85.56. And then finally, it is above Candyman 2021, which is at an 85.56. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. I I knew that there <laughs> you were going to think that it, it being above Halloween Kills is going to suck. <laughs> I said I'll accept it. But yeah, so um, that's where it's sitting at. Like I said, sitting at a B plus eighty six point zero six percent. Awesome. All right. Well, I'd say that concludes this episode. Uh, if you like what you heard and you want to listen to our more of our amazing voices, you can follow, follow and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, whatever you're listening to this on right now, or you know Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all that fun shit. Um, you can also catch all of our episodes on YouTube if that is your preferred listening platform. Uh, you can follow us on all of our social media, or you can DM, DM us with episode ideas, answer our questions of the week when we actually do post them. I should probably stop saying that. Um, um, but also, if you want to join us, uh, because we would love to have anybody, uh, those are as followed. Facebook.com forward slash The Albros. Twitter and Instagram at The Albros, as well as TikTok is at The Albros as well. Um, or you can email us, the Albros channel at gmail.com, if that's your preferred way of getting in contact with us. Uh, you can check out our website, tinyurl.com forward slash the Albros, um, where that is the best place to get merch if you do want it, because that is the only place that you can get some of the designs because copyright sucks. But if you don't want to do that, um, you can always check out our T Public store. Um, and that is tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash the Albros channel. Um, next week, um, Caleb, what's the plan for next? Okay. We're we're, we're just going to put it up (laughs) into the air and it's, it's just going to be a surprise for everybody. Um, so we'll, we'll get back on like a regularly like scheduled calendar again, but right now I don't freaking know. (laughs) 
<laughs> and that's okay. Um, but, um, anyway, uh, until next time, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I am Jonathan. And I'm Caleb. And we will see you guys next week. Okay, I'm going to try something new. Let's see if I can um, do this. <clears throat> I've been practicing this voice. <clears throat> ha ha! See you real soon! <laughs> How was that it? It was great! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't top that! <laughs> <laughs>